next step with the spring scouting process, you know, includes pro days for, for draft eligible players, uh, as well as, as guys that we may have individual or private workouts during the spring. There you do get a little bit better sense in up close situations to understand and take players through drills. You do get some opportunity to talk to the players as well. What each scout will do is they'll go back to the schools from their area and spend additional time at the school talking with coaches, meeting with the players, and then putting the players through the physical tests. Pro days are, are different than other days because it's guys have really trained the whole time and really have gauged since the season was over with the pro day in mind. You know, that's the day they're supposed to peak. Maybe a player runs faster than what you had expected him to run, and now that leads you to ask some questions. Well, why did that happen? Maybe he was injured in a game you were watching. Maybe he's worked harder now in the off season, and maybe that leads to some questions of why wasn't he working harder before? So it, it really is just a final piece to get an additional exposure around the team and meet with maybe some additional coaches and start wrapping it up and putting it, putting it to bed. It's the time and the place you find guys that maybe are better athletes than you thought they were on film. The guys that are kind of the, the free agent types or maybe some guys that slip through the cracks that you gotta keep working on and, and finally are getting their shot to show what kind of athlete they are. And really just, it's, a, it's information overload and you're getting times and you're getting information and it's finalizing your draft year almost, but it's also starting your next draft year on, by talking about juniors and getting that information. I think a pro day is kind of your last physical attempt to show people that you, you have the ability to play football, you can move really well. I think it's like your last real evaluation. You know what, that was, it was bittersweet, I mean, because like I said, I loved Ohio State. And it was kind of the last time that I was going to be able to perform with my teammates, you know. So I remember it was me, Eli, and Vine, we all went out there and did drills together. So I watched Take for a couple weeks before taking over the job. So I saw this kid run around on the field on the tape. I'm like, man, it looks good on tape. Tall, long kid making tackles, making plays. The other kids told me, well, he, he's, no, he's no longer playing. You know, he's, he's, he's a baseball player. So I said, well, he must be like Ken Griffey or something then. I wasn't going to play football anymore. I was like, you know what? Ain't nobody in Bedford going to college out of no for football. So why am I going to waste my time? And I went to high school here, so I know where all the athletes hang out, which is on the, the gym hallway. So after school, I walked in the gym hallway and I just kind of stood there. I said, if he's in here, he's going to pass through here. So somebody said his name, hey, Tyvis. So I walked over. Like, hey, man, then when you're done with baseball and football starts, I'll see you out there. So one of my friends ended up talking to me and going, he's like, Tyvis, just try it for one day. If you don't like it, quit. All right, bet. You know, I, don't, I, don't gotta, I don't have to do it. So I went in there one day and the rest is history. I never left. He made, it was so fun and it was so different from what the previous coach was doing that it just, I just fell in love with it. What I saw was an individual that wanted to do it, had the drive to do it, had the mentality to do it, but had no one to show him how to do it. A kid from Ohio getting to go to the best school in America to me. So, you know, that, I got a lot of props for that. Um, it was a dream come true for me. Huh? I, I tried to do every day. I would come in and work hard because I knew that's where I was going. I wanted to be ready when I got there. Now the defensive player of the game, Tyvis Powell. I just got to say thank you to the coaching staff. They came up with a great plan. Everybody knew this was the seniors' last game. We would just go out here and execute. And that's what we did. We found a way to get it done. Yeah, it, we was pretty good. <laughs> we ended up winning the Nash. We was pretty good that year, yeah. But that's just being with a great bunch of guys, you know, that was all willing to be a family, you know. We all loved each other and truly built that bond, like I said before, and we was able to play for each other and go get it done. Oh, the most place that I visited that meant the most to me was my house in this weight room right here. <laughs> this weight room. Every day, I'm talking Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, every day. 6 a.m., Coach Williams would sit there and try to bust me every day. He tried to, his, his ultimate goal was to kill me. I truly think he really wanted to kill me. Just to see if, I guess, he wanted to mentally prep me for life. It worked. 
because can't nobody else break me no more. <laughs> After the things he said and did to me in this weight room, I haven't seen anything crazy yet. It, it's a respect of, he respects what I gave him. I respect him for what he did. It was a, it was a thing where, hey, you do your hard, you work as hard as you can, I'm gonna work as hard as I can, and I'll, I'll meet you at the top. He was the only person that would get up with me to come in the weight room. So I, that showed a lot to me. He also helped me grow from a boy to a man. He was always giving me the talks and teach me different lessons. Ever since I met the guy in high school, me and him talked every day. Even when I was in Seattle, when I was in college, every day. We talked every single day. They, everybody passed up on you. There's gotta be a reason, but at this point, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what the reason is. Everybody can sit back and complain about it as long as they want to, but I feel like if you spend too much time complaining on something that's in the past, then you won't focus on the future. So now I'm focused on just trying to prove, be better every day, you know? So I, maybe one day I become really one of the best, you know? And I can say, hey, I was undrafted and I really worked for mine. You know, it wasn't given to me. It's a dream come true, really. Growing up in Cleveland, Although I, I was born in 94, so I didn't see the quote unquote glory days, but I know all about them. And seeing that since I grew up being a Browns fan and I watched them every year, I know what it's about and I know how people talk about them. I want to see us win a championship ring. The Cleveland Cavaliers got it done. Cleveland Indians almost got it done. They probably get it done this year. It's the Browns turn. I think that the Browns, it would be like, the best thing that could ever happen, like the world would be stunned. And I, I'm trying to take the world by storm. It was a very good start to the offseason for us, you know, helping our roster and, and ultimately get to where we want to be, and, and that is winning the Super Bowl. All right, Sam, so we're going to get together with the big group next week to go through our free agent signings as well as Tyvis Powell, who was a waiver claim, um, to discuss you know, the player strengths, how we see them fitting into our group. Okay. And um, we'll go through this tape with everybody, but we'll start with Zeitler right now. All right, so. sounds good. So with Zeitler, obviously playing at Wisconsin, first round pick by the Bengals, you know, spent time in Hughes' system in Cincinnati. So you know, coming in here, it would be a flawless transition mm -hmm. into our offense. Is a very smart player. Um, and he's kind of have, has a balanced overall skill set and does an excellent job of sustaining his blocks and, and getting the job done, you know, right. and, that, and that's what we need you know, overall. He's literally a plug and play guy, knows the system. This is a guy that's been you know, a starter for a long time in Wisconsin. They literally nicknamed the guy the Terminator because he was all football all the time. So first play here, you see the athleticism and his play strength here. So you can see his eyes immediately snap and again, his strength with his right hand here, to me this is excellent. The fact that he knows enough to do this and he's physically capable and strong enough of one-handing this guy down past the center. The guy tries to jump on him. Again, love it, tries to give him a little push to finish. This is how we want to play in this division. Absolutely. So here we go on to some pass protection here. So talk me through the technique here and what you see. Again, good hands inside, inside the defender's shoulder pad, so he's, he's already winning the leverage battle. Again, has the the torque and, and bend to be able to you know, stay underneath and, uh, and anchor at a you know, very good level, in my opinion here. You have you know, a power rusher trying to mm -hmm. bull rush his way into the pocket, and you know, he handles them quite easily, again, because of a, a, his athleticism. I just like that he's been a very consistent player throughout his career. A lot of players, you know, you see fluctuations in play. He's more or less been the same guy since day one, and that's kind of a testament to who he is and what he can do for us going forward. So tell me about Treader, um, his, his kind of history in Green Bay and what that looks like and how you see him playing for us. Treader, draft pick out of uh, Cornell, really since he's been in Green Bay, he's played tackles, played guard, kind of found a home at center. When he has been on the field, really excels because of that, his athleticism, his ability to get out in space and run. Um, I think he'd be a good fit for us. Yep, absolutely. All right, so here we go, reaching a hard nose technique here. Again, pretty good player over his head, right? Pro bowler. Yep. So tell me what you're seeing here. Again, you see quickness off the snap, and then this is probably the most one of the most impressive plays on this on this clip here, of, of his athleticism and ability to turn his hips and feet to be able to cut off this 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 you know Pro Bowl nose tackle here. 
So again, this is a, a, a tough block for most centers to be able to make in this league, right. and he's able to do it. Right. Um, you know, looking rather easily. Tell me what you're seeing here, yeah, especially with the right hand. Yeah, no, again, I mean, similar play to the past couple of him getting out mm -hmm. on his own play, but again, you see you know, both the strength, the athleticism, and then the awareness to be able to kind of just stick his hand out there, mm -hmm. you know, sustain his block, cut off a guy, mm -hmm. open up a lane for his running back, and then you know, continue and try to look to finish a play. You know, again, impressive sm small things like that that separate the, you know, the very good centers or athletic centers from from other guys that mm -hmm. you know, stuff like this is, is what we're looking for. Right. Even here at the end, most yeah. guys trip over one of yeah. these two piles. Absolutely, yeah. You can tell this dude's got a little, got a little athleticism to him. All right, so tell me about Kenny Britt. You had these guys for the advance last year, right. correct, when he was yeah, in St. Louis, yeah. and then um, evaluated him this year. Talk to me about how, you, how you've seen his career evolve and who you think he is as a player. Yeah, so Kenny Britt, uh, Rutgers guy, for, former first round pick of the Tennessee Titans, um, kind of came out, you know, had an excellent rookie year early, mm -hmm. you know, early in his career. And really this year with, you know, with the LA Rams now, uh, had his best year since his rookie season, over a thousand yards. Uh, and was their go-to receiver. It's a physical presence, a big body receiver mm -hmm. um, that can win in the contested areas. He plays the receiver position the way we want guys to play. I mean, he's a tough, physical guy. He's competing for every yard. See it here, he runs through a pro bowler's tackle, spins out of it, gets the safety on him, is able to you know, get in the end zone. That's what we're looking for. All right, so Tyvis Powell, local workout guy uh, from Ohio State, was, was with Seattle last year. This was a waiver claim at the end of the season for us. Now, when Tyvis was in Seattle, you know, he did have you know, the interception production in the preseason. He stood out on special teams. This is a big guy with ball skills, and if you talk to Tyvis for two minutes, you can tell how much this kid loves football. He and is, the Browns. And the Browns, and the Browns. He is nonstop football, um, great character guy, excited. He's the type of guy that you're excited to add to the room, not just because of his physical play, his size, his, you know, his, his football traits, but just the fact that you know, this is the type of guy we want on this team. So after reviewing all these guys, you know, how do you think these additions impact us going forward and heading into the draft? No, so I think these guys you know, improve our roster right now. I think it was a, it was a very good start to the offseason for us, mm -hmm. you know, helping our roster and, and ultimately get to where we want to be, and, and that is winning the Super Bowl. Um, and you know, I think looking forward to now the draft coming up, I think we have a great opportunity to add some more talent, more, more competition throughout mm -hmm. the roster, right. and, and really just looking forward to you know, a couple weeks now for, uh, for the draft. Cleveland's going to be our home for a long time now, and when me and my wife got the call, um, we were ecstatic. We both really liked you back in Cincy, and excited to, you know, enjoy all that Cleveland has to offer. The reality is you can't you can't build an entire roster with you know with just players that you've drafted. There's players that you know can make a difference on your team, and it's something we talk about all the time. Just who are the difference makers out there? A uh, lot of players available, but who are really the difference makers? There? There's a there's a veteran player that that fits from a, uh, a talent age. Uh, and financial standpoint and certainly cultural standpoint as well, we're going to be as aggressive as we can in, in adding that player to improve the roster. When me and my wife got the call, um, we were ecstatic. We both really liked you back in Cincy. It was a big draw to us to know that there's some familiarity with the system. It's uh, going to be great to play with them again. His relationship with you is definitely something that brought him to Cleveland. He truly believes in Hugh and he truly believes in this team. He believes that if Hugh is coaching, that anything is possible. I could tell right away that it was gonna be a good thing because our agent kept pushing, why don't you give Joe Thomas a call? Why don't you, you know, think about Cleveland a little bit? I could tell from the beginning that it was looking like we were gonna be coming to Cleveland.
Joe Thomas has always been a Wisconsin legend. Everyone knows who he is. The fact that he's been able to not miss a snap for 10 years is, I mean, that's unheard of. He's uh, definitely the example you want to follow and try to do what he does. As this free agency, you know, worked itself out, I actually reached out to Joe and asked him some questions about Cleveland, the area, you know, all this. Uh, of course, I gave him glowing reviews on all things Cleveland and all things Browns. And I'm not saying I had any influence on it, but I think it's certainly great for a guy in free agency when he can hear somebody that he trusts and he respects to say good things about the potential team that you're looking at. He uh, got me really excited about coming here, and you know, he truly loves it here, and I'm excited to play next to him. It doesn't really matter what last year was, you know, meeting with uh, Sashi Brown and you, they definitely have a plan here, and it'll be exciting to see how they build it up, and I'm just excited to be here and to get to work. I'm gonna give him my all. Whenever I'm out of that field, I'm the guy who's gonna get his job done, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes, take care of my business, and you know, do whatever I can to help Cleveland win. OTAs will be an exciting time. I'll get to meet all the new teammates. I've been lucky enough to meet a couple today, and they've all been great. And me being uh, the meathead I am, I'm very excited to start working with the new strength conditioning staff. The facilities are definitely a great A. Everything is top notch. All the different coaches and specialty people they have here to help players reach their potential, it's really exciting. Cleveland's gonna be our home for a long time now and you know we're excited to like put some roots down and you know get a house and a start a family. Live in the community and you know enjoy all that Cleveland has to offer kind of fell in love with it and, and really made it an integral part of my off-season training. It's just kind of a way to heal my body and heal my mind after a tough season sometimes and get me ready mentally and physically for another season. A good off season is any off season that you come back refreshed, energized, and ready to come and attack another season. I've been staying in Cleveland, hanging out at the facility, working out, doing some yoga, and a little bit of a vacation every now and then. Primarily when I was younger, I didn't really do much in the off season because I needed more mental break um, than anything. But now that I'm a little bit older and I don't get quite as burned out during a season, uh, I actually do work out a lot more in the off season and I try to stay in shape. I was really lucky because I think my third year in the NFL, uh, the head coach that we had at the time introduced yoga to the whole team and, and made it mandatory in the off season. He brought in the girls from Inner Bliss to teach yoga to the whole team and um, from that point I just kind of fell in love with the practice and started practicing yoga actually off site uh, outside of Berea in the Inner Bliss studios just kind of fell in love with it and, and really made it an integral part of my off-season training. It's just kind of a way to heal my body and heal my mind after a tough season and get me ready mentally and physically for another season. There's a lot of things that I like about yoga, but um, one thing I really like about it is it kind of challenges you in different ways than on a football field. Uh, primarily, you're doing things uh, that because you're a heavier person, make it really difficult and challenging to hold certain poses. And I think you work different muscles and different parts of your body than you do on the football field. And you kind of build a balance within your body that sometimes you lose during a football season when you're doing certain repetitive motions. Classes are a lot of fun because they're just totally different than uh, football practice. You know, football, you're running around with a bunch of fat, sweaty guys bumping into each other. And in a yoga class, you got fun music and you've got all different ages of people. You've got guys, you've got girls, you've got old men, you've got young men. And it's just totally different than what you get during the season. And so that kind of diversity and that uh, freshness of a perspective on a workout, I think is really good for your brain, especially when you start getting up there in the, to the double digits of a professional career. Yeah. 
you know, to try to maintain longevity in the NFL, it was, it's always important for me to kind of lose a few pounds in the off season to be a little bit lighter because every extra pound that you're carrying around of fat is multiplied weight on your joints and your joints are kind of your lifeline to career success in the NFL. So you want to take care of your body and your joints as much as you can. And I think it is prudent to try to be as light as you can in the off season. And then as the season comes up, kind of ramp your weight back up to more of a playing weight. so much for coming today and populating the class so I'm not <laughs> practicing by myself. I do appreciate that and I hope to see all you guys regularly scheduled practices and Tammy, thank you for accommodating us and letting us come in and do a special class. So thanks again. But I knew I was gonna make it to the lead. I was nothing nobody could tell me. I knew I just told myself like either I'm gonna get drafted or either I'm not gonna get driving and I'm just gonna go make somebody team. Like, it's just gonna go like that. What can I do to get better for next season? You know, what, what am I gonna be able to do right now? Improve myself enough to you know, try, try and help the team the next year. And that was kind of my mindset throughout the rest of the season and, and the start of this off season.